So let's take a look at some of your questions about this, because as we were hearing, there's still only 1% of drivers actually driving electric cars. Um, first of all, we have a, a question here from Roberto, who wants to know, from production to disposal, how clean are electric vehicles? Because obviously the emissions are much less, but you've got to think about the batteries and all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's a very good point, and there's lots of analysis on it that shows you how it works, and it's a variable around the world. So if you've got a clean grid, then obviously there's a, a, a better proposition in terms of electric vehicles. Our grid in the UK is getting cleaner all the time. There's more solar, there's more wind going into it, so it's only ever going to get better. So whilst some of the comparisons on the well to wheel, if you like, in terms of uh, where that embedded CO2 is, is pretty critical and important, um, it's not the big issue that some people seem to assign it to, to kind of put the detriment to EVs. And the other bit, of course, is it's a twin imperative. It's not just CO2 reduction, it's air quality. So um, an electric vehicle, almost regardless of where the materials have come to build, the battery, the motor, the inverter, etc., the vehicle is, is clean at the point of use because it doesn't have a tailpipe, a uh, full battery electric vehicle. And that's something that we've, we really should consider. It's a twin imperative, CO2 and clean air. Um, but of course there are difficult choices for customers. We've got a question here from Don who says that electric cars with a considerable range are simply too expensive for him. He's on a low income. A lot of people may be thinking of changing their cars, but looking at this, that's a big problem, isn't it? Right now it is. If you're looking at buying a brand new electric car, because there's not that many of them available used yet, it's still quite a new thing. So for new electric cars that do have good range, they are relatively expensive. You're looking at probably around £30,000 for a car that's going to do more than 200 miles. And for a lot of people, that's not in their budget yet. It is changing, it's evolving, and with things like Jaguar Land Rover investing money, Volkswagen and so on, really committing to an electric future, in five years' time, that's going to be different. But for the average consumer, right now, electric is not a default option. OK, now we've got a question here from CP in Manchester who wants to know what the life expectancy of the battery in an electric car is and what's the cost of the replacement? Because you're hearing about significant investment to buy the vehicle in the first place, but yeah. then what about the battery? Well, here's the thing. The battery, I think, for some time was seen as a liability. Now it's seen as an asset because increasingly manufacturers are looking at a second life, a third life to the battery as an energy storage device. So once it's fulfilled its initial work in an electric vehicle, that might be five, six, seven, eight, ten years, it can then be removed and used for energy storage for renewables. So but somebody's still got to pay to replace the battery. They absolutely have. So, and the cost of that? Well, it's excessive. If you, if you look to swap a battery in an electric vehicle, it's the biggest cost in terms of the bill of materials. Absolutely. But How much would an owner typically expect to have to pay for Well, that? if you've got a £20,000 EV, the batteries probably cost something like four and a half, five grand. You know, it, it's a big chunk. Um, but to be fair, if you had to replace an engine yeah in yeah. a, a 20,000 pound car you're up for the same amount of money very good point very good point and the batteries last longer than the cars Nissan have Correct. found that already with the first yeah. generation Leaf it was a real worry but they found the battery lasts longer than the car does yeah and as I say Karen this is switched to batteries being seen as assets rather than liabilities and that impacts right the way through from supply chain to use to ultimately disposal because it is, you do have to look at the whole life thing. But can I just congratulate on Jaguar on this news today, because I think it's fantastic. And I think what it illustrates when Simon's report said it's dwarfed in relation to, say, Volkswagen's investment, but what the UK is really good at is low volume, high value um, engineering and development of products like you see at Jaguar, like you see at Aston Martin. Um, so Aston Martin have their own factory now for Lagonda in Wales. So this is, this is spreading. Uh, OK, we've got another question. This is from Dave in Aberdeen, who has to travel from Aberdeen to Norfolk. And he says that he finds that the amount of time it takes him to recharge the car is very inconvenient. Is there anything that's going to be done about this? It's improving all the time. As of right now, convenience is one of the big shortfalls and drawbacks for electric vehicles if you're doing long distances. If you're around town, around, so if you're staying around Aberdeen and just in that local urban area, electric car is great. Driving to Norfolk is a weakness yeah. for an electric car. No problems with Norfolk, it's just it's a long way to get there. Motorway driving is not a forte for EVs. 
urban driving is where they're really good. So for most people, if it's your first or only car, right now it's not the best option. Yeah. It will be, but we're probably five to ten years away from I hope that. hope he's not doing that trip every day, by the way. <laughs> I would hope not. It would be exhausting. No, I think he says he's does it, he does it a couple of times a mm. year. Um, but another question on this issue of uh, charging. Uh, we've now had Eric, who's got in touch on Twitter, and yeah. he wants to know if it's safe to recharge his car in the rain. <laughs> The, you know, there are so many myths like can you take it in the car wash you know all the it's 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 crazy because that's exactly what they are they're myths the vehicle is totally safe it's as safe as any conventional proposition and it has to be because legislation has to be fulfilled and all of those things have to be in place before you go anywhere near the market so yeah some of these crazy stories and myths are just that they're, they're myths and who puts them about I don't know, but um, I don't have a lot of time for them. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, now, we've also had a question here from Sojan, who wants to know, I think this is another question for you, really, Roger, a lot of people being encouraged to switch to electric vehicles. Uh, is the UK really going to be geared up if there is increased demand? Yeah, absolutely it is. There, over many years now, the national grid in particular, who understand how you know, energy is made and distributed, um, are, are quite confident about how the take-up will happen. And indeed, some of that uh, development with a bigger uh, vehicle park of batteries is, is an advantage. Again, it's the battery as an asset because it can be used to balance the grid. We can push in energy and take out energy. So there's, there's a lot of dynamics to this shift that are actually benefits over and above what a combustion engine vehicle is, which is a fairly, fairly sort of simplistic thing. An EV is a lot more sophisticated, uh, but in a good way, um, not in a complex, oh my God way. Um, that, and that's, that's positive. Yeah. It's going to depend on how quickly demand rises. If everyone wants to buy an electric car tomorrow, we'll be in trouble. But we've currently 1% of new cars are electric. We want it to get to about 100% by 2040. We've got 20 years to get there. And assuming it's managed well, the manufacturers have a, have a vested interest in making it work. The government wants to make it work. But we need to see a lot of effort to make that happen. Uh, Stuart, another one for you. Dave has got in touch from Bath. Uh, it's again this, a question about charging. He says it's such a complicated, cumbersome process. Every time he arrives at a new charging station, he's got to register himself as a user, put in his debit credit card details. Is there any way that can be simplified? Hopefully, as we, as we get better at it, um, like a lot of technologies, when things are new, they're more complex than they need to be and we eventually work out the better way forward and people converge on a, a way of doing it. Electric car charging has been an issue in terms of charging points, different companies having different systems, different car manufacturers having different plugs, but we are getting there. But again, it's, it's difficult at the moment, it is getting better and as we start to see thousands if not millions of more charging points coming on yeah. stream, we're going to get there eventually, but right now there are limitations that, that customers are finding. Yeah, it's, it's consolidating, and actually it's BP and Shell that own most of the charging mm. points now, which is a surprise to a lot of people. A lot of uh, new developments to come on this. Uh, Roger Atkins, Stuart, thank you very much thank indeed, you. both of you, for joining us.